Okay, now they got to get me all mic'd up, I guess, here. You want to go in here? Right there? Yeah, it'll work. I don't know. Let's just drop it in here. I'm coming, but it's just slow. <laughs> don't y'all give me a hard time right, right off the get-go. Okay. First of all, it's a good day, isn't it? And the good Lord has blessed us with an incredible day of sunshine. And where I left home, you know, yesterday and the day before, we had a whole bunch of snow. Snow on the mountains, and, but it was good. It was good. Now, but it's spring. And there's, it's time to grow. It's time to renew, is it not? Now... Let me tell you this. I gave my inaugural address with this tackle box and this old broken up hatchet. Now, let me tell you the story behind this. You see, my grandparents were from the coal fields down in southern West Virginia. And on Memorial Day, this past Memorial Day, my wife and I went to the cemetery to do what we do, put flowers and clean the gravesite and do what everybody else does. Now this is a little old country cemetery back in Hoo Hoo Holla in Jesse, West Virginia. Now, when we were there, when we got done and we were leaving, I was going across this little mud bottom, not a very pretty stream. There's a little one lane bridge, guardrail on both sides. And this lady was standing there and her daughter standing right beside her. She had probably six or eight fishing rods leaned up against the guardrail. This tackle box, this axe was sitting there like this. She had a pair of Carhartt coveralls and a, and a camouflage jacket and a pair of coveralls with the reflector tape on it that she had, all wa she had washed all of them. And I told my wife it was driving, I said, Kathy, stop, stop. And I jumped out. And to this day, that, that, that lady probably has no idea who I was. I didn't tell her. But I jumped out because I knew what was going on. She was selling her life because she didn't have anywhere to turn. She really had nowhere to go. I gave her $100 for the tackle box and $100 for the ax, and I wish I'd have given her every single dime that I had on me. I decided then I would put these in my vehicle and they wouldn't leave because they would remind me of just really how important it was in what I was doing in running for governor. Now, she looked at me with tears running down her face and said, Mister, you don't have any idea how bad I'm hurting. Now, we don't need to cause any more pain. And so the net net, of the whole thing is just this. On the way up here, on the way up here, I had this paper in the car. I read it on the plane on the way up here, and it said, it said this, and just imagine this. It's, and I'll be really quick, but I can't see it without my glasses. It says, although I love the state of West Virginia, it seems our problems are never going to stop. It says, we continue to trust those in government, but we have less and less solutions 
to our ever-growing unemployment, drug abuse, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It goes on to say, you know, I'm surprised that none of our leaders have thought of this idea. You know, we have two prosperous states. Now, this is the person from the southern end of our state. That we have two prosperous, prosperous states that borders. We have more than that. It says, I, I suggest that what we do is petition Virginia to take us back. Because why do we have to continue to be 50th in every statistic? Why do, we our, do our legislators let our highways be destroyed in every way? Why can't we have clean, good roads like they have in Virginia? It says, nice, clean highways that are well-maintained, prosecuting litter, litterers and drug dealers and murderers instead of letting them loose to do more harm. Of course, we're not expected to be that. We're just West Virginia. Now, let me tell you. And now I'm going to come here and I'm going to sit with, it, with you just one second. And I'm going to just say this. That you've got, you've got some really good people that are representing you. You really do. And people that have stood up. Now I want, I want to just, I don't want to stand here and grandstand for certain people and, other, and not others. I have no clue how in the world you've elected Ryan Ferns. <laughs> But beyond that, you do have a superstar in your midst, and Dr. Mike Maroney, you really do. You've got two superstars on the house side, and that's Sean Fluharty and Erica Staunch. And you've got others, don't get me wrong, you've got others that would support the dogs today. But remember one thing, and it's just this. The Republican caucus is really the driver behind what is happening to you. Now just think about this just for a second. I'm not flaunting the Democrat Party by any stretch of the imagination. I have been a Republican, I've been a Democrat, I've been a Republican, a Democrat. I'm a West Virginian. But I want you to know you have a Democrat governor that is actually standing right in front of you and is gonna stop this nonsense from happening that's gonna hurt so many people and it's gonna be the same as that lady with the hatchet and the tackle box. A Democrat governor. And not only that, you have a Democrat minority in this state that's willing to stand up and say the two gosh awfulest words under the sun if you're a politician, and that is, we got to raise taxes. Now, you think I want to do that? Or you lost your mind? You know, but here's the thing. I came up with a way a way to kickstart this state beyond belief for almost nothing, for almost nothing. Here's what I came up with. I said, our businesses got to pay a little bit of a cat tax. You know what that amounts to? If you've got a business that, that is grossing $100,000 a year, it's $25, 25 bucks. It's nothing. Totally nothing. From the standpoint of the people, and I stood in front of this, this beautiful bunch of little kids, and I said, even you can get this, because it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure this out. From the people's standpoint, 
I gave one little boy $4 and a little girl standing there was just beautiful beyond belief, a penny. And I said, here's the deal. We're at a crossroads and we have a real emergency. Now Johnny is at home and he's hurting. He doesn't have anywhere to turn. Maybe his mom and dad don't have a job. Maybe Johnny really is sick or disabled. Or maybe his grandma wants to go to a senior center. Now we can do one of two things. We can actually turn our back on Johnny or we're going to have to find a way for this little boy who has $4 to pay one penny. That's it. For every $4, and I'll bet you my soul that there's not a person in here that would say, for every $4 you spend, if you have to spend one penny, you would be willing to close West Liberty or go, do away with Promise Scholarship or walk away from our vets or walk away from our seniors for one penny on $4. Nobody would. And about that time, that little girl just reached right across me and put the penny in the cup. Now let me tell you, where this day is sad to me is this. We have had 60 days in a session. I have tried everything beyond bejimis to try to make sense out of what in the world we were doing and to come up with proposals that would really work. Now you know where we are? Nowhere. We, I, I, I came up with a plan that would create 48,000 new jobs immediately, right now. Not in a while, right now. 48,000 new jobs. I came with, up with a way to be able to keep our universities, to keep our Promise Scholarship, to not hurt our seniors, to do all that stuff, to spread out the pain over all of us, to sunset the pain when things kicked in and really took off. It was just, it wasn't that it had to be Jim's idea, it was just smart. It was not anything but smart. I would bet my life that almost every single person in this room, if they understood it, would say, huh, I'm in. I'm all in. We need to all be in. And you know where we're at now? We're at... Throw the 48,000 jobs out. We're not doing that. 48,000 jobs. That's more people than there are, than there are today in, in Charleston. 48,000 jobs. Throw it away. On top of all that, tell you what let's do. Let's just across the board take 15% from higher ed. Well, you know what that's going to mean? That's going to mean close West Liberty. It is. It's going to mean close it. It's going to mean... Get rid of the dogs, walk away from all those jobs. It just goes on and on and on, and I keep saying the same thing over and over and over, and I might as well go out there and talk to an oak tree because they don't get it. They don't get it. Now, here's what I say over and over and over. You've got to ask yourself two questions, and if you can answer those questions in an affirmative way, just think about this. Here's the question. No matter what you do, are more people going to come or are more people going to leave? That's it. That's the answer. Now, if you got, and, and then if you say, well, then we can't do that, we can't do this, we can't do this, and we still got this hole in the bucket, let me tell you the last thing, then I'll quit. At Greenbrier East High School, where I coach, you know, and that's an interesting thing. You know, I was a coach, and I've been a coach forever. And everybody was on me all the time. And they were saying, well, by God, he can't coach and do this governor thing. Well, gee, many Christmas. See, you got to understand, I don't go on vacations. All I do is work. And I love my work. And I've got a real passion that you can't imagine for us and our state and a love beyond belief. And I love kids. Now, if I can't do the two of those, I'm telling you, you I can do that walking up the stairs backwards with bubble gum. Now, but you know what? Since I turned the blowtorch on their you-know-what, 
they haven't said one word about me coaching. They're looking for a game somewhere and say, could you please go coach that game and get off us? Now, the net net of the whole thing is just as simple. We have got, no question, a terrible, terrible, terrible dilemma. Here in this great city, you may not see it all the time. Because I couldn't possibly see it, and I was running for governor. I really, truly, in my heart, felt like we wouldn't have to raise any taxes. We wouldn't have to do anything. There's got to be so much waste down there. You can just get rid of what this, 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 and you can cure this. Well, let me tell you. Here's the fallacy, and then, and then, and then I'm done. Here's the fallacy beyond fallacies. If you've read the paper over and over, you would have read these numbers. 4.055. That's what we took in as a state last year. And I'm saying we've got to have 4.4 to be able to survive and not cut into the bone and kill the patient. And they're saying, no way. We, we're not going to spend one dime more than what we took in last year. Now listen to this. I want you to get this because this is really important. Really, really important. And here's my little cup and penny and $4. But here's the thing I want you to remember. 4.055 billion. That's how much money that we took in last year in the state of West Virginia. Now, and they're saying, I think we gotta have 4.4 or we're gonna to just toast away into no man's land. And they're saying, well, there's no way we're gonna spend more than we took in last year. Here's the fallacy. They took money out of rainy day and all kinds of different places and we spent last year, 4.35. This is what we spent. This is what we took in. And they're saying they just conveniently forgot a lot of one-time money that if you continue to live on one-time money, how do you think that's going to work? How do you think it's going to work? It's not, it's not working. It's absolute crazy land stuff. Now, so we're here. I, I'm here on a bad day. The 60th day of crazy land. And I would say with big giant, giant words, pitiful, pitiful. And not only crazy land, I've said to them, if you're going to work beyond the 60 days, we ought not have to pay you. And you know what, if I could brag just a little bit, my little courageous party, the Democrats said, we're all in. And they can't even get it to a vote because the Republicans won't do that. And odds are overwhelming that I extended the session for one day and you know what the odds are overwhelming that we'll do? Now we gotta pay for that. You gotta pay for that and you shouldn't have to. But you know what they'll do? And I'll bet you big bucks on this. You know what they'll do? They'll come in for 15 minutes tomorrow morning and then they'll go home because if they're there 15 minutes, they get paid. It's no good, it's no good. But one thing we're not gonna let happen we're not going to let them walk away from an industry that creates 1,700 jobs. We're not going to let them walk away from a good Mayor Elliott and a good community that's on its way back. not 
we're not. You don't ever have to think twice about me. You don't ever have to think twice of, where does Jim really stand? You know, is he a politician? Oh, God, please. <laughs> you know, I mean, please, Lord, take me from this earth before I, you do that to me. But, but you don't have to worry. You don't have to think twice. Now, you've got to worry that you've got a party on a rampage that makes no numerical sense. They absolutely think they're sent from a mission from the good Lord above, and they think they're there. In all honesty, they just want to get a bunch of scalps that they can go home and brag about and say, by God, I got rid of this. By God, I closed this. Well, you see, with everything, there's a name and there's a family. It's not just a nothing. There's a name and a family. I'm really trying with all in me to take us somewhere. And I need you. And your voices have been heard a little but they have not been heard to the magnitude to move the dial. You see, those legislators want to continue to be elected. Why in the world you elect some, I don't have, a, I don't have any idea how you could do that. But others all want to be elected. I don't care. I don't care a bit in the world. All I want to do is what's right. Now they'll stand and they'll tell you that but it's hogwash. If you dig deep enough, in many, 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 many cases, they're looking for one thing, and that's money. It's terrible, but it's for real. And then if you dig deep enough right inside that, they're looking for ego and status. They're looking to be thought of as royalty. Well, you don't have to do that with me. There was a lady in Beckley, West Virginia, she used, to, she used to say all the time, Jim's as common as an old shoe. And really, it's not real flattering, but it's me. And here we are, where it all started. Here we are on truly sacred ground. And Brother Tony, sitting right here, is a great, great friend as well. Now, I'm going to go over here with great, great pride, and I'm going to sign this with three pins, and I'm going to make absolutely certain that Senator Mike Maroney, Erica, and Steve, or Sean, rather, all get one of these pins, and we're going to shut down this nonsense. Thank you so much for having me. Now I'm going right here. Okay, now this, this is my official veto. This is the way it works. You send up a letter. You send up a letter to the bill, and it's all over. So, as soon as we get back, this little jewel will go right up, and uh, everything will be done. Now, you've got one thing to worry about, and only one thing. And that's this, they can run an end run and try to override me. That'll be driven by a bunch of Republicans that maybe care and maybe don't. So, why don't you come over here and help me? You want to come too? Come on. You stand on one side. Mayor, I'm going to let one of them stand, stand right on the other side. Man, I've got to sign this. I've got to sign this with all three pins, okay? So I'm going to start out and sign J.I. 
and then I'm going to switch. You hold that now, okay? I got to sign an M here, okay? And then I'm going to put another J, and you hold this one, okay? And then I'm going to end this up. We're done. I've got the pins. What do you think about signing House Bill 2459? Say the what? The OBMC jobs that will be effective for the Let me tell you about that real quick, okay? Here's, what, here's the deal. We had, we had a, clean, a clean proposal in regard to Ohio Valley. Clean. Now, we're trying to clean it up right now because I see nothing wrong with it whatsoever on a clean proposal for Ohio Valley, okay? But your little buddy, your little buddy has cluttered it beyond belief. And I mean firms. You know what he's done? He's put in it, he's put in at least three other hospitals and the impacting of that He's put in it that all the funding for the, the mechanism of government, and there's about 15 people there, all the funding that oversee, over, it does the oversight of the CONs and everything is all stripped away. So he's done that. And the other thing he's done is he's got a thing in there that the data that is gathered by the hospitals, it helps us be able to forecast things like what to do within the prisons and what to do here and there, all that's gone too. So what we've done is we've taken a bill that I'd sign in a second for you to protect the hospital, to do some greatness for the hospital, and we've cluttered it up with a bunch of garbage that's making it very, very, very problematic. Now what I'm going to do is try, we're trying right now to get the junk out of the way where I can sign that. Right this minute, on the way in here, we had people trying to clean that out. That's what I'll do. I hope so, because there's junk in this law right now that is, that is just delaying our sale, and our employees are worried, and our patients need help. Listen, I, I'm your number one advocate. Number one. I didn't put all the junk in there and screw it all up. You know, I have been standing there saying, why are we doing this? You're going to end up hurting more people and everything and trying to do some holistic thing for who knows why. But it's very frustrating to me. We'll get it done and get it done right. Okay? Thank y'all for having me. I'm out of here. Go sit down. Go somewhere. Thank you, Thank you sir.